because there's a lot of better people that you should be up here representing as far as our athletic endeavor and prowess. I'm just humbled. One that denominated the two be selected. Dr. White, thank you and to your family for dedicating yourself here to this university. Um, coming back here now, uh, having been a student in 1990 to the transformation is absolutely phenomenal. It is into the 21st century, and you and your wife are extremely proud of what you've done for this university. And then leaving that legacy to Dr. Peterson and to others is absolutely commendable. To my professors that I had at school here, they're absolutely the best. Uh, I had Dr. Kim Wolfskill from English. I had Mr. Tripp uh, from biology, Mr. Ball from calculus. Uh, cannot forget the Sextons, uh, the early couple that I used to walk around in the university. But my my sweetheart, um, they were inspiring to us. Uh, Mr. Paul, who had never assigned student. Uh, seeing ever in 34 years of his teaching, he knew that a fat kid from Mahasi needed a break, and so he assigned seating so that I would sit beside Jessica and follow her around campus, and finally we fell in love with one. Uh, so Mr. Paul is not here this evening, but uh, I can tell you that the, the, the inner kid is very happy about that. So, all right, that was all extemporaneous, all right? That's after being in the Marine officer for 25 years. So I do have some prepared notes, and I just want to. I want to share those because I don't want to miss it. First of all, I love football. And why do I love football? Because it's always about the heart. Talent matters, but what really matters is the spirit and the fight that you bring. And that's going to tie into the back of my comments at the end of this. There's a lot of people that I want to thank this evening, but just like my uh, fellow inductee, Mr. Dog up there, I want to thank the Children Hall of Fame Committee. For nominating me and selecting me, specifically Stan Dixon, who was my neighbor from my high school. So this, this is completely up and up. Uh, but he was my neighbor when I was younger as a, as a young kid, and he used to watch me play football at Hereford County. And I appreciate him nominating me. To my mom and dad. My mother passed. She passed when I was in Iraq in combat in 2008. She was my rock. And she's the one who selected the school for me to attend. <clears throat> she used to tell me, you want to play football? You want to play college football? Sometimes you can't go through the front door. You go through the back door. This was a back door. But it was the best door I ever went through. So thanks, Mom. To my dad, who made me the man that I am. The warrior that I am. The football player that I aspire to be. Dad, you're part of this this evening, and thank you. I'll let you touch my ring after the ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica, you're my college sweetheart, my love, the love of my life. You've given me five children, beautiful children. And you were the best Canadian officer, uh, wife that a man could ever have. Uh, in all my time at first battalion, six wings and the six wing regiment, while I led wings for You held the place together, and you reared our children to make them who they are. And thank you. You are the best thing that ever happened to me. So I love you. To my kids, Jewel, Jack, Joshua, Justice, the Duke. The Duke. Mm. And you're going to have that fifth kid. Make sure that you're making a good decision. But I can tell you right now. I thought I was staying in the Marine Corps forever, okay? Uh, but that fifth one, I, I let him kind of do what he wanted to do. And now that I'm home, whoo, he's still in charge. So I, I'm learning, all right? Uh, but kids, uh, I'm proud of you being your own people, uh, achieving your own goals, and so be you. And a public paid announcement from your grandfather, wear your football pads when you play it. Rock. All right, good to go. All right, now, people I really want to thank also, my coaches. A man cannot stand up here and play a sport without the players and the teammates that you play with. But really what's instrumental is the coaches that coach you. 
get people a bit older in life, and you know, what's life all about? Is it about making money? Is it about doing this? Is it about doing that? Yeah, it's got its place. But it's really about the men who sacrifice who really don't make that much. And invest in you. My first coach was my dad. He invested a lot in me. And I wanted his proof. <coughs> The second coach that I really had was Coach Darrell Allen and Richard Murray. Both Southern gentlemen, both great coaches. Coach Darrell Allen didn't say a lot, but he expected a lot. One of my favorite models was do it right, do it right. Do it wrong, do it all night long. There were some nights we did it all night long. We learned how to win at Griffith County, and that was because of Coach Allen. And his rock, was certainly Richard Murray, who was a true Southern gentleman who kept everything on a steady pace and was a great, great influence on my life. I had the opportunity to come here to chill my college, but at football camp in eighth grade, and I got to see Jody Schultz today, which was really awesome, because one of the highlights of my life in the eighth grade was to come here and to see and be a part of the football camp that Coach Garrison and Coach Service put on. But they would bring in NFL stars. And when you're in the eighth grade, you're standing there and you're looking at Jody Schultz and Jerry Holmes and George Coons, you think, that's what I want to do. And they tell you, you can do this. Listen to your coaches. Do well in school. Be a good citizen. That's what Coach Garrison instilled in all of his players. And I aspire to be that. And I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful that Coach Garrison let me come and play at Joe One College. And there were some times I know I frustrated him. But one of the greatest compliments I ever got was my sophomore year when I heard the opportunity to start. And I was injured. And I fought through that injury to play. And Coach Garrett was going to fund the team. He said, if I had 12 chance drinks on this field every time, we'd win a national championship. And I know that that wasn't a cheap comment because Coach Garrison didn't give out general comments. And he was a great coach and a great person. Thank you. The same for Coach Surface, a quiet man, just did his job, did it quietly, very humble, and was always an inspiration to the players. I left, I left Joe on, it was a heavy heart to leave, but every young man's got to find his own way, and I went down to Methodist, North Carolina, down to Fayette, and I'm grateful for that. Um, coach Seifert has now passed, but he was a tremendous coach to me, as well as Coach Garber, who's not here this evening. And each one of those people didn't make a lot of money, but they were connectors of the life that I wanted because they taught me football, they taught me how to be a man, and later they taught me how to be a warrior. The memories that I take away from football is always wanting to play the sport and play it well. The struggle to always get better and never be complacent. Being a part of winning teams, but also, sons, being a part of losing teams and knowing how to act, whether you're on a winning team or a losing team, to always be a leader and to be a winner. I also learned on the football field that sometimes life's not fair. Get over it, because it's not about you, it's about others, and it's about the team. Football, as well as the military, was my segue, and the one thing that I always wanted to be was important, and I'm grateful that I got the opportunity to do that. Grateful that I got the opportunity to lead Marines, lead them in combat, and more importantly, bring them all home. Football taught me teamwork, perseverance, never quit, and for you boys, always better to give than to receive. I love hitting people. All right, and that's what the sport's all about. But it's also about sportsmanship. And I love that part about it as well. That state of football helped me be a warrior in Iraq and Afghanistan. If you don't think there weren't days that I didn't think about Coach Garrison and running the rapid out in Iraq and Afghanistan in 108, 108 degree heat and chasing insurgents and Al Qaeda and ISIS, he was there because <laughs> perseverance is what you need when you're chasing those folks. And that's what I learned here on this gridiron at Chowan College. So, I want to conclude with my passion about being a warrior, but 
also my passion about football. The one thing I loved about football, and Dr. Ruskin tried to count a lot of Shakespeare and some other readings in there. And, you know, I had to fake the funk to get the A, all right? But I, was, I always loved the one-liners of football, all right? Love who loves you. That's one thing I love about children. And I appreciate you loving me because I love you. Disappointment leads to new beginnings. I was disappointed about the Marine Corps. I love the Marine Corps. But sometimes it's about a list, and one day you move on. But that door closed, and the door new doors open. And I'm forever grateful for that. The other one, be you. And then the ultimate one liner that I heard was not from a football coach, but from a Catholic priest that I named my son John Creedon from. Vietnam, superstar recipient, former Lieutenant Colonel, still active, please. Father John Creedy. It was absolutely true. The man you are today is the man you'll be in combat. I'm glad I heard those words when I was a young captain, young major, because I went back and looked in the mirror and I said, what are the things that I like about myself and the things I don't like? And it gave me the opportunity to get rid of all the things I didn't like about myself. So that when that moment became true and I went forward, I was the man that I wanted to be. So in conclusion, I think I'm under seven minutes. My wife has done a double tap on the watch. <laughs> All right? I want to thank everybody for one nomination, two, to be a part of this esteemed group, and three, thank you for welcoming us back home. Show on University will always be in my heart. And I'll always be a loyal ambassador to you and to this school. So, thank you.
doesn't serve the institution as a sports management program. He served on various NCAA committees, including chairing the NCAA Division II Men's Soccer Committee. He served as a member of the NCAA Minority Opportunities and Interest Task Force. He showed a steadfast commitment to mentoring others, as evident in the, his selection and participation as a mentor in the inaugural NACTA ADA Division II Women and Minorities Mentoring Program. He also is married to his wife, Sue. Together they have three children, Mike, Chris, and Jennifer, as well as six grandchildren, Maya, Macy, Ava, Jack, Avery, and James. The couple resides in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and will celebrate their 50th women anniversary next year. Dennis, would you please come to the vote?
But Mike, Jen, Mike and Chris are up here because you're going to be blessed. They're going to talk. I gave them the opportunity to roast or, ro or toast me. Uh, they know they're on a three-minute time schedule. My daughter was offered, my daughter Jennifer was offered uh, the opportunity to talk. But in her honest way, and she has a great, great demeanor with me. She says to me, she says, Dad, why would I speak? I don't have anything good or funny to say about you. <laughs> and she said, I'll save it for the funeral. <laughs> they have... <clears throat> Our children have left us with three uh, in-laws. We have Josh, Ann, and Lori. Wow. Thanks. And where would I be without my grandchildren? If I knew they were so if I knew grandchildren were so good, I wouldn't have had kids. I wouldn't like to have kids. <laughs> and uh, so I have and I gotta remember all of them. I've got uh, Ava, Jane, uh, James, I've got Jack and Avery, and I've got Macy and we're only missing one. And uh, she's a teenager and teenagers have a lot of things to do. I want to congratulate Ashley, James, Chad, Trayvon, and CJ. I'm truly humbled to be up here among you because you allowed me to be who I am. Uh, Pat and Amy, thank you very much for coming over. Uh, they were our neighbors when I was at Old Dominion. They thought they'd come out and give a few minutes. So I'm going to sit down. Uh, I have no clue. They know they're on a time limit. They know they can only speak two to three minutes. Uh, and if they roast or toast, you're going to have more fun listening to them than listening to me. Thank you very much for this honor. Well, I greatly appreciate it. My father took up way too much of our time. Um, Dre boys, you'll understand this, and hopefully you get the opportunity to do this later in life. Uh, so I apologize if we go a little bit over our time. We're going to make it as short, sweet, and uh, funny as possible, I guess. Um, I'm pretty sure you're wondering why I'm up here. Um, and I can be totally honest with you, me and my brother are wondering the exact same thing. Um, it was really impressive. I, I don't know a lot about you. Um, but to hear the class that my father was inducted with, um, there are some very impressive and amazing athletes that have come through this university. And I'm trying to figure out a fundamental question is why he is joining this prestigious group. You see, by every mark you can grade an athlete by, I would describe my father as very average, mediocre, adequate at best. Um, to give you an idea, when I was 12 or 13, uh, we were sitting at the dinner table and my father came home after uh, an adult slow pitch softball game. He was holding one arm way down by his side and he came in and obviously as kids we wondering what happened to him. And he proceeded to tell a story about how he tried to beat out a single and dove into first place and separated the shoulder. So to paint a perfect picture for you, in order to get a single in an adult slow pitch softball league game, that maybe at the end of the season he holds up a championship t-shirt, he dove into first base trying to get sick. But that's what he was about. He was about winning. You know, he's always been a winner. Um, whether he's in a leadership position or a coaching position or as a player, um, he's always wanted to win and had a will to win that uh, I haven't seen matched in, in many people. At around the age of 14 or 15, uh, my father and I were, were locked in a pretty heated one-on-one -on -one uh, basketball battle in the uh, 
cul-de-sac of our uh, house in New York. And whenever he needed a bucket, he would go to what I would call the bull rush move, which was dribbling straight at me. And at this time, I'm about 5'4 and 120 pounds. And he would pick up his dribble, take two to four steps, which by NBA standards is not a travel. But he would shift the ball side to side and then go for a layup. And obviously it was a go-to move and he scored quite a few times. One of the final times, it might have been the last time he ever played, he needed a bucket. And I could tell he was going for his bull rush move. And he started to dribble, and the dribble was a little harder than normal. He wasn't going to take a jump shot. I saw kind of like the, the breath come out of his nostrils, and he was going for it. As he charged towards me, I gave ground. Again, I'm 120 pounds, soaking wet. And he picked up his dribble, took five or six steps, shifting the ball side to side, went up for a layup, the ball hit the backboard, it hit the rim, and then bam! I grabbed the rebound and I turned around and looked, and my father was holding the mailbox in his hands like this. <laughs> to be his 14-year-old son, he committed what I think is a federal offense <laughs> by damaging our, our mailbox. Again, he's a winner. He doesn't cut people slack. He's always out to be the best. He's out to lead. He's out to make uh, you know, young men and women better. So I really appreciate the honor of my father in this way. Thank you. So that, that was great, Chris, but the question remains. Does this basketball playing, bull rushing, beautiful, bald man, belong in, in your Hall of Fame? By graciously inducting him into the Chawan Hall of Fame tonight, you've already made that decision. You've decided that this pitiful excuse for an athlete belongs here with some of your extraordinary athletes. And that says a lot about this university and the community. You recognize that early in my dad's life, this distinguished West Point grad and soldier had a decision to make, to pursue a career in the military or pursue a career in sports administration. And my dad chose the latter. He embarked on a career that would take him and our family from West Point where he was the very first varsity head coach for the women's fit, uh, fast pitch softball team, to Penn State, where he coached women's softball and later became Coach Paterno's de facto director of football operations, to Old Dominion, where he served as an assistant AD, to Syracuse, where he served as a senior associate AD, to Akron, where he served as athletic director, to Maryland, where he served as senior associate AD, Conference USA, where he served as Associate Commissioner, and finally to Chuan, where he served as your athletic director for eight years. I'm out of breath. <laughs> if anyone ever needs any moving advice, my mom's very good at packing and unpacking and relocating. My dad's resume is chock full of accolades. He won a lot of stuff, and he's been recognized over and over again for his many achievements. And he, he's, been, he, he's been recognized for not the glamorous, high-profile, and ridiculously high-paying side of college athletics. My dad is the guy who handles scheduling, travel, budget, and finance. Not the glamorous stuff. He was the guy that made sure that your buses were there when the plane landed. He made sure you had a place to sleep on the road, and he was the guy that handed you your room key. He made sure you were fed. And during his five, uh, sorry, his almost four decades in college athletics, he mentored countless student athletes and aspiring college administrators. And he gave our family many wonderful memories. 
My dad was the guy that did the thankless jobs that needed to get done so when the time came to play the game, all you had to worry about was playing the game. And he did this job for almost four decades with unwavering energy, enthusiasm, honor, and integrity. So to wrap this up, yes, you're inducting into your sports hall of fame tonight a man who once dislocated his shoulder, sliding into first base in his over 60 slow pitch fastball league. But you're also inducting a man who has devoted almost his entire life to college athletics. And he did it simply because he loved it. And I can't think of a better reason. So on behalf of the entire Hustle family, we thank you for honoring our father in this way. It means a lot to him, and it means a lot to us. Thank you. 
Dr. Gleason, Dr. Black, thank you. Uh, Coach Burke, thanks. Uh, I actually was his last recruit. I was his last recruit. You know, I wish I would have got a chance to play for you. I remember seeing you at my East Carolina game, we played East Carolina. And uh, I looked at Coach Church, I said, and um, I think you just got the job, but I was the trailblazer, and I looked at Coach Church. I said, Coach, it's time for me to go to work. But um, also, I also just want to thank uh, Dr. Tripp as well, Ms. Long, uh, athletic training staff, always have my back. So many great memories here. Uh, I was I was a five ten, I was a power forward in high school, and coach made me to a six seven point guard. I don't know how he did it. I know he played point guard, he did my life before. So man, I just uh, man, coach, I can't I can't thank him so much. Uh, I went to go see him in Greenville Monday. We just, we, just, we just laugh and talk about old memories. Man. Coach meant so much to me, uh, man. He was so wide in my career, so wide in my career. This, this whole Bumper World family, I love you guys so much. I mean, I traveled the world, but uh, I know this was always home for me. Always home for me. After my sophomore season, I, I thought about transferring. Going to a better school, a lot of people do not here, but at the end of the day, this is family roots. This is family roots, and um, this is all call you guys family. So I thank you guys for that. Uh, next up, uh, I won championships, I won awards, I won uh, titles. That's okay, but um, the real reason why I'm here is because of my family, my friends. Started with my teammates, Tino, man, I, I love you so much when you first got here. I feel like this was a program change, man. No, I can't thank you enough for that. Isaac, <laughs> so funny, man. You used to, you used to get coached red as a blow pop, man. <laughs> oh, man. Lando, that guy right there responsible for breaking almost five backboards in the Hamilton. <laughs> My buddy Mark, my friend Mark, always got my back. Appreciate you being here today, buddy. Uh, my cousin, my cousin, man, I love you so much. The officer, detective, the relative. I'm so, uh, I'm so proud of you, man. You, you, you do it all. You do it all. To my aunts, man. My aunt Lynn, oh man. Uh, I enjoy this, my cousin. Throughout my whole career, I, mean, I appreciate you guys. Uh, I think I had a key to all my house and a bedroom. <laughs> Throughout my whole career, I thank you for, for feeding me, trying to put weight on me, coach, like, y'all oh, put some weight on me. I don't think it's ever work. <laughs> but I thank you so much. You, know, I don't, you don't know what you mean to me. To my grandma, thank you for being here today. Love you so much. She don't care about basketball. She want to know is where's my girlfriend and can she cook? That's all she wants. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's it. That's what she want to know. To my uncle, Uncle David, my chef. <laughs> Man, love you so much. I thank you. Probably watch all my games on YouTube overseas. Man, I love you so much. Uncle Terry, thanks for being here. Oh, man. To my brother. Man, I love you so much, bro. All throughout my career, man. With my first, my first pro drive, I was, I was struggling. Couldn't, couldn't get the job. My brother just told me it's to stick with me. Stick with it. Whatever, whatever I needed, he was there. I mean, whatever. I mean, I'm, I'm forever in debt with you, brother. Forever in debt. I love you so much, man. Like, I love you. This success is your success. Trust me. It really is. My 
bottom line. Man, to my parents. To, to my dad. To my dad. I'm gonna say my dad first. He said, you always give me interviews. You just say your mom, you don't say nothing about me first. <laughs> to my dad, man, I, I love you so much. Man, you always had my back. You've been at my game since, since literally. Oh man. Um, us having a business together, that's some of my best days, just me and you going to your child sites, being on top of the roof. Man, I, that's, that's some of the best joy that I get. That's some of the best joy that I get, I, and I won't forget that. I won't forget that. To my mom, to your faith, your courage. You know, it's been a tough year for you. We're going to pull through this together. Love you so much. Man, you got on my back on 40 years of marriage. I'm still working on one, one year. <laughs> yeah, man, I, I love you guys so much. I, I just can't thank you enough for what you've you done for me. Uh, I just remember one time I was, I was stuck in the airport. I couldn't find a flight home. I was stuck in LA. And, uh, I don't know if you remember this. I don't know if you had the money or, or what. But I just felt like it was your last. And since that day, I vowed just to, just to work at my craft and just, and just stay prayed up. And I love you guys so much. I mean, I, I really do. Your success, once again, is my success. I appreciate you. I'd like to thank the whole Chihuahua family for having me again. Ashley Bradford Trigger, women's soccer 2006 to 2010. Ashley came to Chihuahua in the fall of 2006 from nearby Chesapeake, Virginia, as a highly talented scholastic women's soccer player. Bradford scored 23 goals in 21 games as a freshman with a 581 shots on the goal percentage. She accounted for nine, which also accounted for nine season assists and a total of 55 season points. She was named all NCC SIA region was ranked as number two goal scorer in all of NCAA Division II for that same year. In total, she scored 52 career goals, nine game-winning goals, and tallied 15 multiple goal games. She left Chihuahua as the most explosive offensive player in program history, with records in goals scored in game, goals scored in season, points in season, game-winning goals, as well as shots on the percentage. Bradford Trickwood graduated from, with honors from Chihuahua with a degree in marketing management and entrepreneurship. Over her career, she was on both the Dean's List and the President's List multiple times. In 2009-2010, she represented Chihuahua as Miss Chihuahua University and received a scholarship to study abroad in the summer of 2010. After graduating, Bradford Trickwood took a job with Microsoft where she spent four years. Currently, she's employed with Optima Health in sales, marketing, and network management. She's still active on the soccer scene as both a player and a coach. She's a coach with the Beach FC program in Virginia Beach, and currently the captain of the HRSC Elite Club Beach Soccer Team. Bradford Triplett is married to Trey Triplett. The couple resides in Virginia Beach, Virginia. They enjoy many outdoor activities, photography, the beach, surfing, soccer, and more soccer in BC.
Please stop. Actually, please come on up.
direction. I mean, it's really only going to push it. It's the reason why I'm still playing today. It's, it's what I got here.
I don't. I didn't write a speech. I uh, pulled in today around 11:30. Went out on the field with uh, Coach Hall, and I was talking to him. And he jokingly asked if I had my speech ready, and I kind of chuckled. He said, no, I'm not giving a speech. And he's all you want to. There's like two or three other people that asked me if I had my speech ready, and I kind of chuckled and said, yeah. But I guess the joke's on me. So. <laughs> so my son's over there. He's five. He keeps asking me to leave me, so I'll keep short. I'm sure some of you are ready to go to. Um, the first thing I want to do is thank the committee. It's a great honor, so thank you. Um, I want to thank my family. My wife is here, uh, my two kids, my mom's here, my aunt Connie, my aunt Jackie, um, and two of my cousins. So they came all the way from Ohio. Um, some of them left after the football game last night, drove through the night to be here, so uh, thank you. Um, also want to thank my grandparents. Uh, they passed away a couple years ago. Um, but when I was playing, my entire family, everybody I mentioned, my two grandparents, they would load up, drive down, watch the game on Saturday, drive back to Ohio on Sunday, and then turn around and do that for 10 straight weeks. So uh, they never see me, so I just want to thank you. Um, I want to thank everybody at Juwan uh, for welcoming me when I, when I came. Um, I had actually never visited Juwan before I got here. We loaded up all the, my belongings in the car, me and my wife, who was my girlfriend at the time, my mom drove down, dropped me off, they left, school started in a couple weeks. I didn't know anybody, so it was a big shock. But uh, everybody welcomed me, made it a pretty easy transition, so I just want to thank everybody. Um, I don't want to say a lot of names because I know I'll leave people off. Um, last person I want to thank is Coach Hall. Um, he gave me the opportunity to come down here when he told me that he was leaving Havana. He asked me to come with him, so I just want to thank him uh, for putting me in a position to be successful. There's a lot of times where I can stand. And I think, I think any coach that you've had, every good coach, that's how you feel. But uh, we have a great relationship. I couldn't thank him enough. Uh, even though a lot of times I would have an idea, and then we would try it, and if it worked, it became his idea. So that's, that's how this stuff is. But uh, I just want to thank everybody. It's a huge honor. I'm very excited.
I was asked that we get everybody together before everything disperses and gets out of here. And so, uh, thank you again for making the 34th annual Jim Garrison Sports Hall of Fame back with the induction ceremony a huge success. And it takes an army to, to make this happen. And so, enjoy tonight's festivities, enjoy the memories of the day, and, and continue to celebrate the great honor of being in the Hall of Fame with us. Thank you, and stay blessed. Good night.